glad to see these arrive in the mail. This is an Aerotech L1390 Mojave Green. And the propellant grains arrive in two boxes. This one has two of the 75 millimeter grains. And there's another box here that has the other 75 millimeter grain. So it's kind of like going to the candy store to open this up and see this big old 75 millimeter Mojave green grain. And then there's two more of those in this box. So there are the propellant grains. Also in the reload kit is a good heavy duty nozzle and o-rings so these are the two spacer o-rings that go between the grains these two o-rings are for the aft and forward closures and this one is for the seal disc and you also get a nice smoke element as well as a heavy duty canvas phenolic liner now in this case i'm going to be cross loading this into my cti 75 millimeter case, three grain case. And these are designed to be cross compatible. I'm just gonna go through the steps of doing this and discussing each step along the way. If you want a faster version and a more professional version, you should go to the Aerotech website because I noticed they have a really good video there that's short and to the point and they assemble it really quickly. So that's much better than what I'm doing here. But I'm just going through this step by step and chatting about it as a regular rocketeer. And as always, we'll be following the rules of the National Association of Rocketry for safety and all other relevant rules for high power rocketry. Motor cross-loading into CTI, 75 millimeter, three grain case. Here's what I need for that. So I've got the forward closure from CTI. I've got retaining ring from CTI. I've got the nozzle holder from CTI. And I also have the closure, the rear closure from CTI. And the one thing that's not from CTI is the sealing disc, forward sealing disc. So this I had to order separately from Aerotech and I think it's in the range of about $40. But this is a reusable metal sealing disc. So you can see it's a anodized aluminum sealing disc. And if you fly CTI, you'll know that CTI has a plastic disposable sealing disc, not like this reusable metal Aerotech sealing disc. So that's the one additional part that's necessary to order beyond just the standard hardware of a CTI 75 millimeter motor. So once you have that, you are ready to go. And I'll also be using the Super Lube for various stages of this assembly. And it's also wise to wear eye protection in case of an issue while you're building the motor. The reload kit from Aerotech comes with very nice clear instructions. You've got the thrust curve here. It looks like it's gonna be a nice burn. And then on the inside of these instructions, you have good detailed step-by-step -step procedures including nice clear diagrams of the o-rings and all the parts of the motor so i'll be going through this step by step and following their instructions in the context of a cross load into cti hardware so here's everything all lined up ready to assemble so i got the three 75 millimeter grains i've got these spacer rings which are going to be dry no you don't add any grease to those we got the phenolic liner, and then we got the hardware for the forward end, and we got the hardware and O-ring for the aft end. So the first step is to go ahead and put these grains inside the phenolic liner. 
with, as he said, a spacer, dry spacer in between each one. So that looks like this as you put the spacer in and then line up the grains and push them in. Then down here on the aft end, you want to take the nozzle and just put it in up to the shoulder so that you have the right spacing. I'm going to go ahead and use some super lube to get the smoke element and the foreclosure and the remaining o-rings looped up properly. As I said, this is these two are for the forward and aft o-rings and this one is the o-ring that goes around the metal sealing disc on the forward end. Smoke element, you just want to lube up one end, not the other end, because then you have no smoke. Lube up one end of it, and then I also put some lube all around, a light amount, all around inside the chamber in the, in the forward closure. The key is to keep the face that sticks out here completely dry, because you want that to be able to burn the smoke. So you want to lube up the one end, the forward end, something like that, and then Put some lube in here, a light amount, just so it's easier to pull it out after the flight. So it's going to look like that, and you can see that this surface is completely dry from the smoke element all the way out here. It's all dry, no lube. So now these are all lubed up. I also put just a little bit of lube, a very thin amount, here on the forward and just on the inside of the aluminum case, and also down there on the aft end just to make it easier to put parts in. And then finally, I'm gonna lube up this phenolic liner, and this is gonna be a thick amount of lube because that can be difficult to pull out after the flight. So I'm gonna really put heavy lube on the exterior of this phenolic liner. First, here goes the sealing disc. I've already put the O-ring on there, as you can see, the lubed O-ring, and then that is gonna go here on the forward end, sealing the top of the top grain, like this. So that looks like that, and you can make sure that it's the right length by putting in the nozzle. This is just temporary, but just putting it in up to the shoulder to make sure everything fits, and it does. And now I'm going to pause and lube this up a lot so that I have an easier time dismantling this after the flight. So that's all lubed up and now this entire phenolic liner can be slid into the CTI 75 millimeter three grain case. I'm going to slide this forward closure in on the forward side. You can see I've already put the greased o-ring onto it. Then I'm going to slide this retaining ring on, and I'm just going to tighten it down about halfway to get it so that it grips the threads, but we'll tighten it down fully later. Now down here on the aft end, it might seem kind of strange, but you actually take this o-ring, it's looped up, and you slide it on top of the nozzle until it goes down to the shoulder of the nozzle. So it doesn't actually go into a groove, it just goes onto the shoulder of the nozzle. And then the CTI nozzle holder goes over that and you have the notch facing upward. The notch is gonna go on first and facing forward like this. It goes all the way onto the nozzle. So the nozzle assembly is gonna look like this. I'm gonna push that in and then I'm going to put on this rear closure. Got a little bit of slag from prior flights, but that doesn't matter because it's on the exterior. So I'm gonna slide this in and then tighten this down, begin tightening this down, not all the way. So that looks like this. I've just tightened it about halfway. And then, as is customary with these CTI cases, I wanna go down here to the front end, and now I'm gonna tighten this down so that it is flush with the top of the case. So here I am at the forward end. I'm gonna tighten this retaining ring. If you have a CTI wrench at this point, it can be good to use it in those notches. And if you don't have the wrench, you just gotta find some creative way with pliers or wrench, a standard wrench, to find a way to tighten this down. I wanna get all the way down until it's flush or slightly submerged in the case. So I've wound that down now, and you can see 
is pretty much flush with the end of the case. So now I'm gonna go to the other side of the motor and tighten this one down by hand. And so that is the Aerotech L1390 Mojave Green cross-loaded into a CTI 75 millimeter case. And like I say, I'm just a regular rocketeer. I refer you to the Aerotech YouTube site where they show this procedure in a more professional way and faster. But this is my version, and I'm looking forward to flying this cool motor.